Hi and welcome. In this uh, introduction to parametric modeling and generally uh, uh, visual programming. This uh, part of the course we will be doing uh, with Dynamo and Dynamo you can get uh, by many ways or two ways. One is to run it from Revit and the second is to run it from the something which is called Dynamo Sandbox. But to make it clear, since I order you to install uh, Revit and uh, no matter which version did you install or you have, generally the principles which we'll be doing, the codes which we'll, we'll, we will be doing uh, in this course are quite basic. So it doesn't really matter. Maybe the icons will be different. Maybe some new features will appear. But I promise you that the basic which you will learn will be appropriate to any version of the Dynamo from very, very early first to the latest one. I uh, have on this computer Revit 2024 and this is uh, what I will be using. I will just open um, a new Revit model whatever template you will choose, it doesn't really matter because the Revit uh, we will not be using so much at least uh, on the first weeks of this course uh, and I will automatically go into the Manage Ribbon and I will start Dynamo. After a few whiles uh, the Dynamo will appear and maybe for a different versions of Dynamo the interface will be looking a little bit differently but the main deal is to click file and new or just click here when i will just uh, click file new i will click home workspace or if there is no difference generally um, if, if there is no different um, variants just click whatever the most important thing is to have the view which i have right now on the screen and of course you since you are following the uh, recording. So uh, the interface it's very simple. On the left side you see the library with the libraries with the categories of the objects which are quite well uh, structured. On the top view you see the basic um, buttons. The one for the file it's used for the saving, opening and uh, importing. When the Dynamo, it's mostly about the preferences, um, the packages, it's used for installing some packages, but the main screen here, it's used to create scripts and to control the geometry. And now right when I'm um, using right mouse of my button, I can open the search, uh, the search of the commands in Dynamo and this search it's exactly the same as this search so if I will type here line for example I will have the set of the commands which are connected to the line keyword the same here if I will search through oh, sorry if I will search line I will have exactly the same commands uh, if I will double left click in the empty space of the um, um, of the screen, I will have something which is a code block. Let's say that this is a basic design unit in the Dynamo. It's used to create a codes like inputs, like numbers, like uh, text. So for example, if I will type zero and go outside of the code block, I see the zero and the semicolon is added automatically because the this semicolon is coming because it's the language which is used in the code book it's some kind of the abbreviation of the C sharp so um, at the end of every command line you can use the semicolon uh, so this is a zero but if I will create another code block uh, let's say that I will create a variable a so it doesn't it's, it's not a text then this is a variable um, so it needs some input because he needs some value to it and the next thing, if I double left click and would like to create a text, I, will, I need two parentheses to have. So text one, uh, you see that it's a little bit orange color. So this is a text, this is a variable, 
this is a number. Uh, when I want to have a float number or a double number, I think I have to use a dot. So the dot it's used to create a float number, so something with or uh, so something with uh, specific precision. Uh, so maybe those are four basic things, uh, three basic. Um, uh, three basic uh, inputs like the number, integer, uh, text, string, uh, differently saying, and the double, the float number. Those three are inputs. And as you can see, I can grab them. And the rule is exactly the same as in every AutoCAD from, uh, sorry, for in every Autodesk uh, software. Running from the left to the right, you need to mark everything what you want to be. Uh, inside the marking zone and from the right to the left you just have to cross the, the things which you want to cross. So let's try to make it from left to the right free first input. Now I am using shortcut control plus G and I am creating a group. So I am changing the name of it. I'll just zoom out a little bit. Basic inputs and going outside and description those are basic inputs from code block. So this is a uh, first group. This code block which I created with the just the letter A, I would like to also create a, give him a name and I will call it a variable. And this contains data and for example if I will now click on this small arrow on the end of the code block which is generally a value of zero I can connect it to a now a uh, will be zero so as you can see if I will go over the code block I'm not clicking anything I'm going just over those three dots I can go and pin the output uh, of this code block. So I will observe what is it. So now if I will change the A from being zero to the text, my A became text one, which makes this a variable. And the last thing, if I will attach it to zero, zero, one, so to float number. Now, if I would like to have more variables, I can always create another one like B and C. And let's take a look if when I did it, he automatically recognized that he needs more inputs and then the A will be zero, the B will be text and the C will be zero, zero, one. So in fact, now I have three outputs, A, B, C, but the one which is showing off here, it's the last one. So he's only showing me the last line of the code as the output. How to work on the lists and arrays of the data, I will talk a little bit later. Right now, I would like to create another input, an input which is called a slider. But to uh, just clear the code and give you a good introduction into visual programming, I will change the color of the variable to be, for example, blue. And the inputs I will try to make in green, the variables in blue, and the outputs, let's say, in uh, yellow. So uh, the, if, if you would like to observe some of the inputs, you can always use watch. If you will type watch, you will have something which is able to read uh, the outcome of your code. So let's copy it three times. A, uh, for A, B, and C. And I will mark those three, Control G, I will type outputs, and I will say read data. Those things which I am putting here, it's just for you. So uh, it is not, uh, I will make it maybe orange color, but those things like outputs, read data, it doesn't change anything. Generally, it's just for the uh, for you when you are creating your own algorithm. 
it's very useful and practical to create groups to name name uh, the part of the codes is really making it clear and later when you're coming back to the coding after some while it's really making a difference so it's a tip for you when you are uh, constructing algorithms whenever you are doing something please name it make some comments because later you will see you will forget why you have been doing it like this and also when you are opening such kind of the file file you can automatically recognize what is the inputs, what you can play with, what, how you can observe the effect of the algorithm, and where is the main engine, like a solver of the algorithm, the main body uh, of, the, of the code. Okay, this was very simple. Let's try to make something with geometry. Since this is a visual coding for the parametric modeling, we want to model something. But before we will go into modeling, there is one thing. Right now I am coding, but when I will start to create a geometry, I will maybe uh, would like to rotate the view and try to uh, see how this geometry will look like. And then there is a small button here on the right top of the corner of the main screen, enable background 3D. Let's go for this one. And right now the right mouse button will be used to orbiting the, uh, the view. The uh, scroll, uh, holding scroll of your mouse will be used for panning. And uh, if you want, but now you cannot change the codes. So if you want to change the codes, go back to the um, coding uh, mode. So enable graph view navigation and the shortcut for jumping from one to the another, it's control plus B. So remember when maybe from some reasons, uh, when you open the file and you cannot find the search uh, thing and the code blocks, then try to go into the different um, mode to navigate mode and then probably the problem will be solved. There is like the plus and minus and uh, something which I like to use quite often, zoom to fit. So when, when you are using zoom to fit, it's generally trying to fit the screen according to the either geometry, either the code, depending on in which mode you are working with. Uh, one interesting thing, it's also here in the left bottom, left bottom you see automatic, but with the bigger codes, you can sometimes, you would prefer to use manual. It means that this code will not uh, change until I will click run. So I can modify this code, I can add some extra values, but until I will not click run, it will not run. So let's try. If I will change this zero to, for example, 10 and go outside, it should automatically update A as it would be automatic and we would watch and uh, 10 here, but we don't see. It's because we change it to manual. So if I will click run, then this A should become 10. So I'm clicking it and I have my 10. Since we will be using right now, uh, or we will be mod uh, coding only small codes, I will change it to automatic. But sometimes remember with the bigger codes, it's preferable to run the manual uh, codes. Okay, but as I was saying, let's get back to geometry. So maybe our business. So first, uh, first th things first, we will start from points. So to create a point, I will use this time library instead of searching. I will try to sometimes switch from searching to using libraries to learn you that there are two or more possibilities to find the command which I would like to use. So if I will go into geometry, I will go into points, I will find the point and then I will use the one by coordinates. So if I will click those, this one, so again, the whole thing, geometry, points, point, by coordinates, X, Y, Z. Per default, X, Y, Z, it's automatically zero. So as you can see, it's uh, already there uh, in the middle. But if I would like to uh, make, for example, coordinate X equal to 10, I can use the code block. And if I will then uh, type here 10, 
and click X, then we see that on the red axis, which is the X axis, we have the point moved to the X position. Okay, so I will create another point and I will create some line and I will introduce you some different input types. So uh, this time, instead of using um, the library, I will use the search option. So right click in empty space, I will type point. And as you can see, the point by coordinate XYZ is not exactly the first one which show up. And here is my small uh, tip for you, and uh, next tip for you. After point, you can put dot, and then if you know the command, so by coordinates, uh, it should find the command which you are searching for. But this, of course, will time with the time. So when you will know more of the commands, you will know how exactly they are named. Uh, okay, so we have two points. Now I would like to create a line. Since I don't know exactly how the line, what kind of the commands it has, I will use the tree on the left side. I'll go into the geometry. I assume that the line should be in the geometry. Abstract, curves, meshes, modify, point solids. This doesn't... Uh, I think the line will be in the curves, so I'm trying curves. Then I have my line, which I was using. And then I have to search what options I have. By best fit through points, by start point directional length, by start point end point. It looks like something which can be uh, good for me, so I will choose it. And one more thing, when I see this, when I roll down the menu for line, I see that four of them are on the green uh, line with plus, and one is with the blue line with question mark. And those with the plus are used to create the geometry. So also if you go over it and you will see <clears throat> the information about the input and output, it should tell you a lot about the, the command in itself. Uh, so when it comes, uh, I will go for the command connected with the question mark. I will see that the input is already a line and the output will be a vector. So I assume that those commands with the question marks are assigned to the objects, uh, to, the pro to the commands, which are used to read the properties of the objects. Okay, I have my line by start point and point. I will connect uh, one point and then another point. You remember that if I, per default, x, y, z is zero. So it means that my line, it's now from point zero, zero, zero to point 10, zero, zero. So um, let's make it a little bit more visually appealing. So instead of the using code block, I will delete it. Uh, he will turn uh, yellow. It's the warning. If I will go over the warning, I will be able to read what is the problem. And he's saying points are likely coincident. It means that he is not able to create the line because the starting point and the ending point, it's exactly the same point. So from basic mathematics from school, we know that we are not able to create a line between the same points. Uh, I will need to introduce some kind of the uh, value to one of the points. Let's say that I would like to change the uh, the, um, uh, the coordinate of the ending point of the second line. I will create a slider. Right click in the empty space, typing slider and choosing number slider should be and connecting uh, it to the, for example, X and then playing with it. As you can see, we create our first parametric uh, and user-friendly because it's using sliders algorithm to create a line of the length which I would like to have. Okay, maybe it's not so sophisticated code, but it works. And this is the most important thing today to make the Dynamo working. Okay, uh, we have the points, we have the line. Uh, let's try uh, to... Um, for example, read the line length. And right now to, to read the line length, I would like to um, first 
try to figure it out where to search for it. Okay, your first probably shot would be to type length. And it is true, here you can go over and this length, we have to take a look on it, returns the number of characters contained in the given string. So it's definitely something which we were not searching for because we were searching for the length of the curve. So you go for the second one, returns the total arc length of the curve. Looks much better. And now, um, I was saying, I will not click it right now, I will go back to the curves and line, and I am searching that, oh, in the line, I don't see any possibility to read the length of the line. And the reason of this is because the function of reading the length or a method or a property, uh, it's hidden in the curve. Uh, let's go into the uh, curve. We see that we have much more of the properties which we could uh, apply to the curve, not to the line. Or here is the uh, mind blowing thing. Every line, it's a curve, but not every curve is a line. It's a very, very important thing to know. Uh, but here in, with the question mark, we can find exactly the length which I was showing you before uh, through the search option. I will take it. I will take it here. And of course, this double will be exactly the same as this one because we are controlling the length of the curve by this uh, thing. We know that we can use, for example, watch to preview the value, or if I will go on the three dots and lock it, I can have this 39.9. So if I will introduce another slider, so I will just control C, control V, I will have two sliders and connect it to the Y. Uh, now the length of it will not be so trivial to find. Of course, it's still just the Pythagoras theorem, but uh, he is recalculating this length quite fast. Uh, and right now, those are my inputs. So I can get it into Control G, change it into the inputs. This part, it's the algorithm. And those are my outputs. And to make it uh, consistent which, uh, with what I was saying before, I will change the colors. And my code this time is looking a little bit longer. It's still very basic, but, but as you can see, we create our first parametric geometry. And what we have learned that we have inputs, algorithm or methods or solver and outputs. One more uh, tip for you. If you are changing the numbers, um, you can change the name of the uh, every command in the code. It's also helping a lot. So the number slider here, for example, I would like to call it X coordinate of the end point. I'll just copy it, control C, and this time I will change it. To y coordinate of the endpoint. I know that right now it's quite easy to read it, but when you will have much bigger codes, it will be problematic to figure it out which slider is responsible for what. So my recommendation for you is always to name it, to group it, to make the codes as uh, clean as possible. And remember, the codes which we are doing, we are not always doing only for us, but sometimes for our group. So try to make it uh, clean and nice. Um, do not make this lecture too complicated. Right now maybe saving the file. I will click file and save. Remember that there is not so good uh, auto saving, but generally the Dynamo file it's saved independently from Revit. So if you will open any Revit model which you have, you can just open any Dynamo or in theory any Dynamo um, exercise and Dynamo um, uh, 
file and read it. I will call it tkt4198 lecture 0 because this is a uh, very very basic stuff. So remember uh, you don't have to save anything in Revit to run the Dynamo. You can open this Dynamo file also with uh, on other computers if you just open the Dynamo. Right now uh, we have the code. Let's uh, maybe um, do one more important thing which will be um, creating a little bit more um, uh, creating um, very simple code like this but with the code block so this time uh, uh, one more thing if you would like to hide the preview of the geometry I can hold uh, like grab everything from the left to the right or click ctrl plus a uh, and right click in the empty space, space and I can hide the geometry preview if you click this hide geometry preview you will see that um, like the crossed eye icon it's shown if you zoom out and you don't see the line here so uh, you could say that the algorithm is not working but it's not exactly true it's only a uh, turning of the preview of the geometry so remember that the code will be still running okay i will run the code uh, code block a new code block and i will try to recreate the um the code which I have been using, uh, doing with the uh, visual programming. So I want to create a point. So I will type point dot by coordinates, and I will type zero 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 semicolon. And I can create another one point by coordinates, and I will this time type ten ten zero semicolon. I will go outside and see what has happened. I automatically see that I created two points and now I would like to create a line. Line dot by start point end point. I am opening the brackets and I am searching for the tip. He's saying start point comma end point. Nice. I will type P1 comma P2 and semicolon. And he will say he's waiting for the P1 and P2. But since I created them in the previous lines, I can use just here P1 equal to my point by coordinates and P2 equal to point by coordinates. In this case, I see that I created line by two points P1 and P2. And right now, um, instead of 10 and 10, which will be frozen in the geometry, I would like to, instead of this, 10 and 10, I would like to add an input variable x and y. Let's add it. And then I will create a number slider. So a uh, number slider, it's a good choice here. I will connect it to the x and another one to the y. Let's see if it's working. I think it's working very well. And as you can see, this part of the code is doing exactly what this part of the code was doing. So those are inputs. This is algorithm. So if you will prefer to use code blocks or using visual programming, it's up to you during the semester and the exam. I'm giving you the free will to do the stuff as you like for me. The only important thing is to learn you how you can create algorithms, not to judge how you are doing it. If it's working, it is working. Of course, there are better and the worst ways of doing algorithms, but um, in the end, the effect, so if it's working or not, is the most important for the engineer. Okay, for now, it's enough because uh, the main reason of recording this video is to start playing with Dynamo. We create very basic algorithms, but we also learn how to use um, the modes. So I was visual coding right now, but if I will go into enable background 3D, I see I can rotate and see this beautiful line which I created. 
In the next sessions, we will learn how to create much more advanced codes. But for today, it's all. Uh, hopefully, I interested you and uh, you will be waiting for the next uh, videos or uh, lectures, of course. So.